Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Today I'm going to go over the scores from the MLB Summer Camp Exhibition Games from yesterday and look ahead a little bit to the start of the season and summer camp games that are going on tonight with some uh, uh, final tune-ups before opening day. Um, Go over Premier League results from yesterday and look ahead to today's games. 2012 Top 10 MLB Players and Games. I'll do my starting pitcher rankings for the 2020 season and my second best bet since March. All right. um, We'll start with the MLB exhibitions from yesterday. Um, We'll look ahead to today's as well. Um, The Phillies and the Yankees ended in a 2-2 tie. So no win and loss. Um, D. Gregorius back to New York is sort of a big story. Um, Aaron Judge hit his third homer of uh, the summer camp. Mike Ford, who uh, I think we'll see playing time at first base this year, along with Luke Voigt, gets a home run too. Vince Velasquez, five innings for it, and a run, a walk, and six strikeouts. So I think Vince Velasquez should actually be in the Phil's rotation. Um Davey Garcia, an inning in two-thirds, four it's in a run, two walks, and a strikeout. He's somebody that I think um, isn't ready for the big show, and I think that this could very well be um, somebody that uh, the Yankees probably should have traded away because I think his value um, was already um, at its peak. Nationals over to Orioles, 4-2, to two, getting the win, Steven Strasburg. The loss, Alex Cobb, and the save, Eric Feed. Strasburg, five innings, six hits in a run, no walks, six strikeouts, so he looked good in his final tune-up before Saturday against the Yankees. Alex Cobb, four innings, two hits, two runs, two walks, and five strikeouts. So not a horrible outing for Alex Cobb. And then uh, Hendrick or Kendrick Homer, I said Hendrick, Kendrick Homer for Washington um, in this game and an RBI double. Indians over the Pirates, eleven to seven, getting to win by Clevenger to loss. Richard Rodriguez, um, Jordan Luplau Homer, Francisco Lindor Homer, he looks really good. Josh Bell Homer, Mike Freeman, the hot prospect for Cleveland, Homer, Colin Moran Homer. Jake Bowers homer. It's a lot of uh, bigger names in this game hitting bombs for each side. Mike Clevenger, five innings, four three runs a walk, and five strikeouts. So um, Clevenger wasn't bad. It was just the bullpen gave up a lot of runs for Cleveland. And uh, Trevor Williams started for Pittsburgh, two and two-thirds innings, two hits in a run, no walks, and a strikeout. Astros over to Royals, 6-3. to three. Lance McCullers, the win. Mike Montgomery, the loss. And getting the save for uh, Houston was Blake Taylor. Uh, notable things in this game, Salvador Perez, homer for the Royals. He's somebody that um, missed a lot of last year, if not all of last year. Um, Josh Reddick homered, the veteran for Houston. Martin Maldonado homered for Houston, so... Uh, the Astros looked pretty solid. McCullers, five innings for it's in a run, no walk, six strikeouts. Solid performance coming off of Tommy John surgery. It's interesting to see how this translates into the regular season. Mike Montgomery, three and two-thirds innings for it's in a run, two walks, and two strikeouts. White Sox over to Cubs, five to three. Dallas Keuchel to win. You Darvish to loss. Alex Colomb to save. This felt like a normal game because you had... The two starting pitchers and the closer all getting the respective uh, win, loss, and save. Um, Eloy Jimenez hit a grand slam in this game against the team that initially signed him as an international free agent. That is a one of the highway robbery trades over the last five years. And it's um, kind of um, concerning that the Cubs were arguably on the wrong end of three trades. This trade, the Jorge Soler trade, and the uh, Gleyber Torres trade. But although, in fairness, they did win the World Series, 
with um, Chapman, and they did win with Jorge Soler too. So um, that's what they'll say. But um, the one that we can give them a uh, okay, we get it was the uh, the Chapman Torres deal because they did win that season. But yeah. Um, Jose Quintana for Aloy Jimenez and Moore will go down as a mega win for the Chicago White Sox. Dallas Keuchel, five innings, one hit, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. He looked very good. And starting for the Cubs was Yu Darvish. 47 hits, five runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. He obviously gave up the grand slam to Eloy Jimenez. So after that, he kind of settled down. A little bit. Angels over the Padres, one nothing. Getting the win was Griffin Canning. The lost Garen Richards, and that was against his former team too. He used to pitch for the Angels. And the uh, tie buttery to save. Canning looked really good. Six innings, three no runs, two walks, five strikeouts. And Garrett Richards, four and two thirds innings, five hits, no runs, a walk, and five strikeouts. And um, the lone run was scored in the top of the first on a uh, fielder's choice and an error. So. Um, yeah, Gary Richards, very promising. His first um, start in a long time. Um, Dodgers over the Diamondbacks, 12-1, yet the Dodgers continue to dominate. Julio Urias to win, and the loss, Taylor Clark. Notable people, the homer, Jack Peterson, Mookie Betts, uh, Chris Taylor. And Julio Urias' line, five innings, four hits, and a run to walk, and three strikeouts. Taylor Clark, 46, has five and runs, two walks, and two strikeouts. Giants over the Athletics, 6-2. to two. Drew Smiley to win. Sean Benaya the loss. Um, Stephen Piscotti homered in this game for Oakland. Kevin Gossman actually started the game. Well, it was really, like I guess, the opener. An inning and a strikeout. And then Smiley got the win. Just pitched a scoreless third inning. And then... Uh, Sean Benaya, five innings, four hits, three runs, no walks, four strikeouts. So I guess he's looking ahead a little bit to um, opening weekend. And then you have a couple summer camp games today. Two o'clock, you have the Astros and the Royals going in this game. Doesn't say the starting pitchers. They'll probably list them once um, opening day rolls around. 6 o'clock, Orioles Nationals. 6.40, Tigers Reds. 7 o'clock, Marlins Braves. 7.30, Blue Jays Red Sox. 8 o'clock, Rockies Rangers. 9.40, Angels Dodgers. 9.45, Athletics. And the San Fran Giants. Okay, now we'll move on to soccer. We'll look ahead to today's games as well as recapping yesterday's games as well. Um, so yesterday's results we'll start with, um, Everton defeated Sheffield United, 1-0, Everton, 13-10 and 14, 49 points, Sheffield, 14-12 and 11, 54 points. Brighton and Newcastle ended in a 0-0 draw, Newcastle, 11-11, 15, 44 points. Brighton 8, 14, and 15, 38 points. So I correctly predicted the draw there. And Wolves over Crystal Palace, 2 nothing. I got that one right as well. Wolves, 15, 14, 8, 59 points. Crystal Palace, 11, 9, 17, 42 points. Two games today, 1 o'clock Eastern. You have Watford and Manchester City. Man City, 24, 3, and 9, 75 points. Watford, 8, 10, and 18, 34 points. Watford is not a good team whatsoever. They just fired their manager, making that news the other day. And the new manager, or the new interim manager, is in for a rude awakening. Man City is obviously a really good team. They're getting ready for the Champions League coming up. Um, and I really think that um, Man City wants to make a statement here. So give me Man City, and I expect them to win by multiple goals. And then 3-15, Aston Villa and Arsenal. Aston Villa... 8, 7, and 21, 31 points. Arsenal, 13, 14, 9, 53 points. Arsenal's playing very good ball right now. They've won six of their last seven matches. The lone loss was against Tottenham on July 12th, that Sunday. I think that 
Arsenal is going to continue this little run here, led by Mesut Ozil and Nicholas Pepe. So give me Arsenal FC here for the win on the road against Aston Villa. Now I'm going to go over the MLS results from yesterday and this morning and look ahead to tonight's games as well as tomorrow morning's game. Philadelphia and Orlando City ended in a 1-1 draw. Um, it was a scoreless first half, and then Philadelphia gets on the board in the 68th minute, 1-0 on a goal by Ilashino. And then two minutes later, Orlando City ties the game on a goal by Mauricio Pereira to even it up at one. So these two teams end in a 1-1 draw. Both these teams are going to the round of 16 anyway. So uh, they're just playing for seeding purposes. So 1-1 um, one, one draw in that game. This morning, Toronto FC over New England. Or I'm sorry, that is in a 1-1 one, one, or nil-nil draw. My bad. I just had Toronto in my head because I picked them to win that match, but I was wrong. I was wrong about the other one. I had Philadelphia, but that ended in a draw. So 0-0 draw between Toronto FC and New England. Tonight at 8 o'clock, you have Atlanta United against Columbus. This is a major must-win game for Atlanta as they're sitting in the standings with zero points. They're in the similar situation as NYCFC was the other morning against Miami. Columbus has looked really good with six points. I'm taking Atlanta here. Um, I think Columbus is good. So, um... I think that they're a little happy. They're due for uh, um, a loss here. So give me Atlanta United tonight against Columbus. 10.30, the Montreal Impact and the D.C. United. So Group B play. Um, Montreal is in a little bit of trouble here. Um, D.C. United has had two draws. I'm going to go with the Impact here for the win. Um I just believe in do. This is a I believe in do kind of uh, segment here for MLS. So keeping that theme going, I'm going with the Montreal Impact tonight over to D.C. United. And then tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., you have Real Salt Lake and Sporting KC. Group C play. Um, both these teams have each played two games. Um, Real Salt Lake won 1 0, Sporting KC 1 0 1. Tough call here. Um, I'm going to go with Sporting KC. Um, even though they're coming off that compromised win against uh, Real Salt Lake here. Um, or I'm sorry, against Colorado in a game where uh, you could argue they really shouldn't have won. And then Real Salt Lake is coming off the draw against Minnesota. So this is a tough one. I want to go Sporting KC. Because I think that they're more talented. So I'm going to go with the Sporting KC. Um, to uh, build off that comeback win. I don't feel good about it. Because there's always that letdown factor. Oof. Am I going to go with Sporting KC. Or the draw. That's tough. I'm going to stick with my bones and go with Sporting KC. I'm not a huge draws fan. So give me a Sporting KC over Real Salt Lake. Real Salt Lake coming off a draw too. Um, their offense really hasn't been there. Sporting KC can score. So give me Sporting KC. I feel a little bit better about Sporting KC tomorrow morning against Real Salt Lake. Now I'm going to... Do my 2012 top 10 MLB players. Um, before we get to the top 10, I have some honorable mentions. Josh Hamilton of the Rangers, um, fifth in the MVP voting. That was his last really great year in the big leagues. And then he signed that big contract to the Angels and was a complete bust in Anaheim. Bryce Harper, Nationals. This was his uh, rookie year. Um, won the NL Rookie of the Year award. And really um, showed what he could potentially be that year. Chase Headley, Padres. This was the lone great year of his career. Um, the Yankees gave him that four-year contract, pretty much 
hoping that he'd become that player again or somewhere close. But he really was never that close to that guy. He just had literally one great year at the Padres, or quite really um, one great second half. David Price, Reyes, he won the AL Cy Young Award. It's just that the, um, this top ten list is really loaded with hitters, and there's only one pitcher on the list you, I think, could be... Um, uh, you could be uh, pretty um, dumb if you don't guess who it is because he was the best pitcher in baseball at the time. We'll get to him in a little bit. But David Price had a very good year. Did he deserve the Al Cy Young that year? You sh- could definitely argue he should have. But the Rays didn't make the playoffs that year. Adam LaRoche, Nationals. Um, he was a big part of the Nationals surprising 2012 that really put him on the map as people looked at them as a contender for years to come. Clayton Kershaw, Dodgers. Um, Clayton Kershaw, another great pitcher that did not make the top 10. You could argue should have won the NL Cy Young, but the Dodgers did not make the playoffs. And the last honorable mention is the guy that won the NL Cy Young Award, Ari Dickey, Mets. Um, He had a fantastic year, really good second half. That got him that NL Cy Young Award, and then uh, then the Mets traded him away, and the Mets arguably won that trade because they got Noah Syndergaard in there. And um, uh, Dickey was okay with the Blue Jays, but the Blue Jays didn't win anything with R.A. Dickey. And now top 10 MLB players of 2012. 10, Orion Braun, Blurers. Um, Ryan Braun, um, this was one of the last great years he had. He was the runner-up to Buster Posey. And the NL MVP. And uh, the Brewers really weren't that good that year. They were really good the year before. They made the uh, NLCS. But Ryan Braun was just awesome. So he belonged on the list. Nine, Adam Jones, Orioles. I had to put Adam Jones on here. He was a big part of the surprising Orioles in 2012. Which took the Yankees to five games in the ALDS. Eight, Robinson Cano, New York Yankees. Robinson Cano is the best player on the Yankees that year, hitting for average and power. And um, this was probably one of the last, like, awesome years he had in the big leagues. And then after he signed that big contract with the Mariners, um, he did get, make a couple all-stars with the Seattle and had some nice numbers there, but they weren't as good as the Yankee stats. Seven. Adrian Beltre, Rangers. Adrian Beltre was awesome in 2012. Um, yeah, the Rangers underachieved that year. Wind up losing in the wild card game to the Orioles. But uh, Beltre was unbelievable. Third in the uh, AL MVP voting. Um, sixth, Andrew McCutcheon, Pirates. This is really the year Andrew McCutcheon um, put his name on the map. Um, this was his breakout year. He was the NL MVP favorite there for a while. That season, and then the Pirates fell apart, and uh, I think McCutcheon got a little bit too much blame there. Although he did win the MVP the next year, carrying the Pirates to uh, the NLDS. Five, Joey Votto, Reds. Joey Votto was unbelievable that year, helping lead the Reds to a division title. Number four, Justin Verlander, Tigers. I gave you a hint that there was only one pitcher on this list. Justin Verlander was unequivocally the best pitcher in all of baseball in the early parts of the 2010s decade. He was still the best pitcher in baseball in 2012. He helped lead the Tigers to the World Series. Yeah, he won the MVP in 2011, but he was ungodly awesome in 2012 as well. Um, Just um, keep doing his thing, and he was... Probably robbed of the AL Cy Young Award that year. He should have probably been the Cy Young for a couple years in a row there with the Tigers. Number three, Buster Posey, Giants. Buster Posey's this high because he was the NL MVP and he carried the Giants to a World Series championship. If you do that, you um, get respect in my ranking. So Buster Posey, best position player on the championship team, NL MVP that year too. Had his, probably his best power season that year, and he hit for average that year as well. So he was a deserving uh, NL MVP winner. Two, Mike Trout, Angels. Mike Trout's first full season in the big leagues. Um, 
There are so many people that said that he should have won MVP over Miguel Cabrera, but I don't agree with that. The Angels did not make the playoffs. The Tigers made the World Series. So, um, there you go. Um, Mike Trout, though, was awesome. He should have been the unanimous rookie of the year that year, which he was. And after that season, people were pointing to him saying, okay, yeah, we have baseball's next best player. And number one, Miguel Cabrera, the Detroit Tigers, triple crown winner. Unbelievable season, carrying the Tigers to the World Series, and he wound up winning back-to-back -back MVPs in 12 and 13 because of his uh, spectacular hitting and uh, helping his team win. So Miguel Cabrera, my top MLB player of 2012. And now my top games of 2012's Major League Baseball season. No honorable mentions, actually. Here's my top 10. 10, Red Sox-Tigers, April 8th. 13-12, Tigers win on a walk-off home run by Alex Avila in 11 innings. And obviously that season was a season from hell for the Red Sox. Bobby Valentine, last place finish in the AL East, and it was a disaster. 9, Athletics-Tigers, October 7th, ALDS Game 2, 5-4 Detroit. Wins on a walk-off sacrifice fly by Don Kelly. Yeah, Don Kelly hit a walk-off sack fly in a playoff game for the trait to give them a 2-0 series lead. 8. Orioles-Yankees, October 11th. LDS game for a 2-1 Baltimore in 13 innings as Baltimore staves off elimination, forcing a game 5 as the Yankees on the winning that game five with CC Sabathia pitching a complete game. Seven, Giants Reds, October 9th, NLDS game three, 2 1 San Francisco in 10. Um, the Reds were up 2 0, and then that extra inning win for San Francisco flipped that series as they came back from 2 0 to win that series, and they wound up winning the World Series. Six, Cardinals Nationals, October 11th, NLDS game four, 2 1. Nationals win on a walk-off home run by Jason Worth to stave off elimination and to force a game five. Five, Athletics-Yankees, regular season game, September 22nd. 10-9, Yankees win in 14 innings on a walk-off E3. This was a game that was on my bracket of glory. I was there. Wild game. The Athletics were up 9-5 to five in the top of the 13th inning, and then the Yankees scored four runs in the bottom of the 13th, including a game-tying home run by Raul Abanez, who we'll talk about in a couple minutes, and then bottom of the 14th, Yankees get it done, um, even though it was sloppy defense by the A's, a walk-off E3, and Eduardo Nunez, I believe, was the guy at the plate that was, uh, I guess, credited with the walk-off, and, um, the Yankees and A's were battling for their division titles. Like, Oakland was on the verge of passing the Rangers had they not done it already. And then the Orioles were um, right in the Yankees' tail. So that was a big game for both of those teams in the pennant race that absolutely had to be mentioned on this list. Four, Tigers Athletics, October 11th, ALDS, game four, 4-3. Four, Oakland wins on a Coco Crisp walk-off single in the bottom of the ninth. Detroit was up 3-1, to one, about to close out Oakland, and then Oakland rallied and won the game and forced the game five, although Detroit wound up winning that game five with Justin Verlander on the bump. Number three, Giants-Tigers, October 28th, World Series game four, 4-3, four, San Francisco in 10, and now it's the game that the Giants clinched the uh, the the World Series as they wound up sweeping Miguel Cabrera and the Detroit Tigers. Number two, Orioles-Yankees, October 10th, LDS, Game 3, 3-2, three, Yankees in 12 innings on a walk-off home run by Raul Abanez. It was 2-1, Orioles about to go up 2-1 in the series. Struggling A-Rod gets pinch hit for Raul Abanez. We talked about this on the bracket of glory too, and Raul Abanez comes up. Hits the pinch hit game tying home run to send it to extras. And then Abanias comes up in the 12th inning and hits the walk off homer to send the Bronx crowd into a frenzy. 
And number one on my top 10 MLB games of 2012 list, Cardinals Nationals, October 12th, NLDS, Game 5, 9 7, St. Louis wins from Comfortine fashion. Nationals are three outs away from advancing to the NLCS. Not so fast. The Cardinals score four runs in the top of the ninth. And then the Cardinals got it done. And then uh, that game in that ninth inning really set a bad reputation for the Nationals until this past October in which they actually won the World Series. So um, because of how surprising that comeback was by the Cardinals, that's why that um, game... Five is my number one game of 2012 for baseball. Now I'm going to do my MLB pitcher rankings. Um, this is a long list, so bear with me, guys. A whopping 161 guys on the list. And starting at the bottom at 161, Asher Wojciechowski, Baltimore Orioles. This guy's just not very good. Um, he's like automatic home run giver-upper, um, especially against those good offenses like the Yankees and the Red Sox in its own division and Tampa Bay and soon to be Toronto. Nine, Ryan Weber, Red Sox. He really did not show me anything in his brief time in the bigs. Fifth, 159, Ubaldo Jimenez, Rockies. Um, Ubaldo's this low because he's not pitched in a couple years, and last time I saw him pitch, he was a train wreck with the Baltimore Orioles. And, yeah, he was a good Rocky, but this guy's old and he's washed. 158, Jordan Zimmerman, Tigers. Boy, how far has he fallen. His Tigers tenure's been a disaster. That was a bad contract. Um... The AL was not the best fit for him. And he was much better in the National League with the Nationals. 157, Jeff Hoffman, Rockies. This is somebody that they got in the Troy Tulitsky trade for, um, from Toronto. And he has not panned out. 156, Cole Stewart, Orioles. This is someone that hasn't panned out. Um, he was a hot prospect for Minnesota. Just didn't work out there. But I don't see him working out with the Baltimore Orioles in a... Um, hitter's ballpark either. 155, Stephen Brault, Pirates. Stephen Brault um, just wasn't good last year for the Pirates. He's the worst starter on arguably the worst team in the National League. 154, Peter Lambert, Rockies. Um, Peter Lambert got called up last year and uh, really didn't show much. 153, Pablo Lopez, Marlins. Pablo Lopez did so show some flashes, but he's on the Marlins, and he um, really uh, kind of unraveled towards the end of the year. 152, Yasei Kikuchi, Mariners. This guy um, came in the season with some hype. Um, he started off the season really good, but he was a complete flop towards the end of the season. 151, Jacob Junis, Royals. This guy I don't think is very good at all. He broke Aaron Judge's wrist and um he's just somebody that I don't think is quite frankly good although he has shown some flashes but I'm not sold on this kid 150 Daniel Norris Tigers Daniel Norris was one of the key pieces in the David Price trade for the Tigers that came over from Toronto he just hasn't really put it all together 149 Kendall Graveman Mariners this was somebody that was also a former Blue Jay pitching prospect that they sent over to Oakland in the Josh Donaldson trade. Graveman did not really work out there. He failed to stay healthy, and now he lands himself with Seattle. 148, Chi-Chi Gonzalez, Rockies. Chi-Chi Gonzalez was a um, surprisingly okay pitcher at the Rangers, but really hasn't been good with the Rockies. 147, Jose Arena, Marlins. This was somebody that was actually okay two years ago, but sucked last year. 146, Nick Paveda, Phillies. I don't even think that Paveda should be in their rotation. I think Vince Velasquez should be in their rotation instead. But Nick Paveda does have some good pitches, though. And I think he's better suited for a bullpen role. 145, Justice Sheffield, Marlins, or Marlins Mariners. Uh, 
Sheffield came over in the trade that sent James Paxton to the Yankees. Um, Paxton has been pretty good for the Yanks. Meanwhile, Sheffield has not been that good for Seattle. 144, Josh Lindblom, Brewers. Um, Small sample size last year, but wasn't very good. 143, Logan Webb, Giants. Logan Webb wasn't a train wreck for the Giants, but I'm just not sold on him. 142, Mitch Keller, Pirates. Mitch Keller is a prospect that um, was highly touted, but hasn't really panned out yet for the Pirates. 141, Dylan Cease, White Sox. Similar scenario here. Hasn't really worked out yet, um, but does have some potential. Another guy like in this uh, plateau of um, players. Um, 140, Corbin Burns, Brewers. Um, this guy did show some potential two years ago, but took a huge step back last year. 139, Ivan Nova, Tigers. Ivan Nova has bounced around the last few years. Pirates, White Sox, now in the Tigers. And um, if he actually puts together a respectable year, I could see um, him getting traded or a respectable like first month. I could see him getting traded and then... Uh, or if a respectable year for the Tigers, him getting re-signed by the Tigers. 138, Hector Velasquez, Orioles. Hector Velasquez was very mediocre with the Red Sox. And then um, they just let him go, and then the Orioles picked him up, which I thought was weird. 137, Antonio Sensatella, Sensatella Rockies. Um... This is somebody that has potential, um, has some good pitches, but just wasn't that good last year. 136, Eric Lauer, Brewers. Eric Lauer showed some flashes with the Padres, but he was in that big trade between the two teams in the offseason that involved Zach Davies and Luis Urias and a bunch of other different players, Trent Gritchum as well. 135, Stephen Matz, Mets. Stephen Matz is someone that was highly touted by the Mets but really hasn't panned out to be what the Mets were hoping for. 134, Caleb Smith, Marlins. Showed some flashes but had a bad second half last year. 133, Jordan Yamamoto, Marlins. Um, showed flashes last year too. 132, Freddie Peralta, Brewers. Um. Freddie Peralta, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, he's somebody that um, tends to give up a lot of home runs. 131, Zach Eflin, Phillies. Zach Eflin's okay. Um, flashes um, some good pitches. Um, had some good games with the Phils. 130, Trent Thornton, Blue Jays. His stats secretly weren't all that bad with the Blue Jays. I think that uh, he could be solid this year. 129, Wade LeBlanc, Orioles. Wade LeBlanc was good with the Mariners a few years ago, but I don't like him on, in the AL East. 128, Alex Cobb, Orioles. Alex Cobb wasn't bad yesterday in the exhibition, but um, he has not been good with the Orioles. 127, Martin Perez, Red Sox. Martin Perez was this highly touted pitching prospect back in, in the day with Texas. And now he's bounced around. He was with Minnesota last year. Didn't love him there. And I just certainly don't love him in the AL East. 126, Matt Andrees, Angels. Matt Andrees was actually a pretty good um, opener slash reliever for the Rays a few years ago. And he got traded to the Diamondbacks. Didn't work out there. But we'll see here with the Angels. 125, Derek Holland, Pirates. Derek Holland wasn't bad two years ago, but he sucked last year. Won't be shocked if he's in for a bounce back this year. 124, Vince Velasquez, Phillies. I like Vince Velasquez more than two other starters in this rotation for the Phillies. And um, he pitched well yesterday against the Yanks. He was somebody that the Astros loved, but they traded him away for Ken Giles. So, um going to be interesting to see how he pitches this year. I think he's somebody that um, can finally put it together. 123, Dylan Bundy, Angels. Dylan Bundy's interesting. Um, really didn't um, put it all together with Baltimore, but we shall see with the uh, di different division in the AL West 
and here in Anaheim. Um, 122, Drew Smiley, Giants. Uh, Drew Smiley was terrible in the first half, and then he went to Philly and actually was pretty um, solid. And he was okay in the exhibition yesterday as well. 121, Spencer Turnbull, Tigers. He's one of the guys that some of the stats are atrocious, but some other stats are actually not bad. Spencer Turnbull wasn't horrible, horrible last year for uh, the Tigers. 120, Nathan Navaldi, Red Sox. He's their opening day starter. That's all um, you got to know there. He, uh, he's just somebody that's just inconsistent, gets hurt often. 119, Danny Duffy, Royals. I feel like Danny Duffy is somebody that simply isn't that great anymore. His comeback story was nice, but um, I think his better days are behind him. 118, Homer Bailey, Twins. Homer Bailey wasn't bad last year with the Athletics. And I actually like the fit here with um, the Twins in the back end of their rotation. 117, Jordan Lyles, Rangers. Jordan Lyles has some potential. And I think that... Um, He's someone that uh, could benefit pitching in that uh, good rotation that down there in Texas. 116, Merrill Kelly, Diamondbacks. Merrill Kelly was somebody that I was really down on last year. If I'm not mistaken, I have him ranked as the worst starting pitcher in baseball, but he really improved last year for Arizona. 115, Colin McHugh, Red Sox. He um, apparently isn't pitching this year, so um, got to take him off the list. But he would have been um, 115. So that's um, unfortunate that uh, he chose not to pitch this year. So everybody I mentioned uh, earlier gets one number up. So let's go um, quickly from the bottom to uh, where we left off. Um, 160, Wojciechowski. 159, Weber. 158, Jimenez, 157, Zimmerman, 156, Hoffman, 155, Cole Stewart, 154, Brault, 153, Peter Lambert, 152, Pablo Lopez, 151, Kikuchi, 150, Junis, 149, Daniel Norris, 148, Kendall Graven, 147, Chichi Gonzalez, 146, Jose Arena, 145, Nick Paveda, 144, Justice Sheffield, 143, Josh Lindholm, 142, Logan Webb, 141, Mitch Keller, 140, Dylan Cease, 139, Corbin Burns, 138, Ivan Nova, 137, Hector Velasquez, 136, Antonio Senzatella, 135, Eric Lauer, 134, Stephen Matz, 133, Caleb Smith, 132, Jordan Yamamoto, 131, Freddie Peralta, 130, Zach Eflin, 129, Trent Thornton, 128, Wade LeBlanc, 127, Alex Cobb, 126, Martin Perez, 125, Matt Andrees, 124, Derek Holland, 123, Vince Velasquez, 122, Dylan Bundy, 121, Drew Smiley, 120, Spencer Turnbull, 119, Nathan Navaldi, 118, Danny Duffy, 117, Homer Bailey, 116, Jordan Lyles, 115, Merrill Kelly. So now 114, Carlos Rodon, White Sox. Um, he's somebody that... um. Is somewhat of a frustrating pitcher for some of the White Sox fans here. Um, he's someone that does have some potential. He was the number three overall pick in the draft not long ago. And I think um, could potentially uh, be like this year's Lucas Giolito for them, maybe. 113, Kevin Gossman, Giants. Kevin Gossman had some bad stats last year. But there are some stats that actually suggested that uh, his ERA and whatnot was just bad luck. So him in the big San Francisco ballpark could benefit, I think. 112, Kyle Gibson, Rangers. Kyle Gibson is just mediocre to me. Um, he did have some good numbers in Minnesota, but I don't like him in the Texas ballpark. 111, Brett Anderson, Brewers. Brett Anderson... Um, had some moments the last couple of years with the Dodgers and the Athletics. Um, Going to be interesting to see uh, him in Milwaukee. 110, Jeff Samarja, Giants. Jeff Samarja quietly wasn't terrible last year, but hit that contract is really bad, though. And I don't think uh, he's the pitcher that the Giants were expecting him to be when he signed that contract. 109, Rick Porcello, Mets. Rick Porcello, um, I think, 
uh, could be in for a uh, change of scenery benefit going to the National League from the AL East. And he wasn't that terrible against the Yankees the other night in the exhibition. 108, Chase Anderson, Blue Jays. Chase Anderson quietly um, had a nice year for the Brewers last year. I think the Brewers have the worser of the Andersons now, and the Blue Jays got the better of the Andersons. 107, Joey Lucchesi, Padres. Joey Lucchesi showed some flashes, but there's some stats that are for him that are underwhelming. Number 106, Kyle Freeland, Rockies. He was terrible last year. I think he could be in for a bounce-back season this year and be somewhat close to the guy he was two years ago with the Rocks. 105, Josh James. Um, Astros. Josh James is an interesting player. Um, he's somebody that... Um, Showed some upside, but there are some stats that I think are a little alarming for him. 104, Justin Dunn, Mariners. He was very promising at the end of last year for Seattle. I think that he may come back to haunt the Mets this year a little bit. 103, Andrew Heaney, Angels. Um, Andrew Heaney is a pitcher that will be starting on opening day, surprisingly, for the Angels, um, he's just somebody that really hasn't put it all together yet, despite uh, stantilizing talent. 102, J. Happ, Yankees. Um, J. Happ had a good um, finish to the season last year, although his beginning of the year, he was just awful. 101, Sandy Alcantara, Marlins. He's going to be starting for the Marlins on opening day. Um, not a huge Sandy Alcantara fan. Um, He's good at striking guys out, but he does give up some long balls. One oh oh, so one hundred. Reynaldo Lopez, White Sox. I think he could be in for a bounce back here after a disappointing 2019. Ninety nine. Adrian Hauser, Brewers. Adrian Hauser wasn't bad last year for Milwaukee, but that was as a reliever. We'll see what he can do as a starter. Ninety eight. Austin Voth, Nationals. Austin Voth was quietly solid for Washington last year, and I think he's going to benefit from being in that rotation with um, the, the big three they have there with Scherzer, Strasburg, and Corbin. 97, Tyler Chatwood, Cubs. Tyler Chatwood finally, or, uh, finally um, was living up to that contract that the Cubs gave him and uh, quietly had a good year last year for Chicago. 96, Trevor Williams, Pirates. I think Trevor Williams could be in for a big bounce back year for Pittsburgh. He was not good at all last year. Um, 95, Mike Montgomery, Royals. Mike Montgomery um, is somebody that struggled last year. I think could be in for a bounce back for KC this year. 94, Jose Yurdeke, Astros. Urquidy is somebody that... Um, Showed some promise with Houston last year before getting injured. And I think, in fact, they're in their rotation this year. 93, Zach Gallen, Diamondbacks. This kid, I think, has a chance to be special. He was awesome when he got called up with the Marlins and then they traded him to Arizona. I think that can go down as a win-win trade for both teams because it would, in theory, address two needs, like young pitching for Diamondbacks and young uh, um, position Middle infield prospects for Miami. But Gallen, I think, is an all-star potentially down the road. 92, Michael Pineda, Twins. It's going to be interesting to see how he looks after he comes back from the PED suspension. He was good last year before the suspension, although there were some numbers that uh, regressed for him down the stretch of last year before the suspension. 91, Matt Shoemaker, Blue Jays. I think this could be a, a um, dark horse, dark horse comeback player of the year. Candidate, he was actually pretty good last year before getting injured. 90, Tyjon Walker, Mariners. Remember how good this guy was before he got hurt? I think he can also be a dark horse, dark horse guy for the comeback player of the year in the American League. 89, Tanner Rourke, Blue Jays. I think this could be a good pickup. Um, Rourke was actually pretty good with Oakland last year, but I'm not a fan of Roark in the AL East. Maybe that'll hurt him a little bit, but we'll see. Um, 
88, Julio Tehran, Angels. Julio Tehran is somebody that was a little frustrating to watch with the Braves. Maybe a change of scenery to Anaheim could benefit him. 87, Michael Walker, Mets. I think Michael Walker is someone else that can benefit from a change of scenery. He was very, very good with the Cardinals in, in the beginning of his career, and then he kind of um, faltered, whether it was because of injury or inconsistency. So um, I'm interested to see how he looks this year. 86, Jake Arrieta, Phillies. Jake Arrieta is in a contract year this year, so I won't be surprised if he puts together his best season since probably the uh, World Championship season with the Cubs. 85, Sean Newcomb, Braves. Um, I love Sean Newcomb. This guy, I think, is a rising star, and um, he's just been hurt with injuries the past couple years, too. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how he looks. 84, Lance McCullers Jr., Astros. I think the biggest wild card of perhaps the American League this year is Lance McCullers. And if he comes back and is the Lance McCullers of old, that's a game changer for the Houston Astros. 83, Johnny Cueto, Giants. I think Cueto's another wild card this year in the National League. If he pitches um, well and good for a month, maybe if the Giants are out of it, I can see them trying to flip him for uh, some young prospects. 82, Adam Wainwright, Cardinals. It's sad Adam Wainwright's ranked this low, but it's a reality of the situation. He's no longer an ace caliber pitcher anymore, although he pitched actually respectably well in the second half last year and was actually pretty good in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. 81, Luke Weaver, Diamondbacks. Luke Weaver was a key piece in that trade that sent Paul Goldschmidt to the Cardinals that the Diamondbacks got in return. Luke Weaver was really good last year before the injury. I think... um, He could be good again this year. 80, Jose Quintana, Cubs. He's another pitcher that I think is a little frustrating to watch. Um, I thought he was a little overrated when he was on the White Sox, and I think I was right there. Um, And obviously the Cubs overpaid him, or overpaid the trade for him. And he's somebody I think is in a contract year as well, so maybe he pitches well. 79, Zach Davies, Padres. Zach Davies was pretty good last year for Milwaukee. Um, I think pitching in a bigger ballpark in San Diego could benefit him. 78, Robbie Ray, Diamondbacks. Um, Robbie Ray's another guy that I think is a little bit frustrating to watch. Um, He has great stuff, and he's somebody that um, could really um, make a step forward this year, I think, if he stays healthy. 77, Griffin Canning, Angels. This guy, I think, has a chance to be a breakout star for the Anaheim or Los Angeles Angels this year. And he really um, pitched well in the exhibition yesterday. 76, Wade Miley, Reds. Wade Miley was interesting last year. Um, he wasn't bad, but his a lot of his stats um, were skewed because he had a couple really, really bad games last year for the Astros. So it's going to be interesting to see how he pitches. He's one of these guys on this list I could be very right or very wrong about. 75, Gio Gonzalez, White Sox. Gio Gonzalez has been quietly very good these past couple years with the Brewers. I think he'll help that young White Sox rotation being a veteran presence who's pitched in big games before. 74, Anibal Sanchez, Nationals. Anibal Sanchez was very good for the, um, the Nats last year, helping them win the World Series. And I think that he has a chance to be good again this year. 73, Joe Musgrove, Pirates. Joe Musgrove quietly has been um, pretty solid for Pittsburgh these last couple of years. He was one of the pieces that came in the Garrett Cole trade. And I'm interested to see how he looks this year as he comes into the season as... Uh, their um, opening day starter. 72, Brandon Woodruff, Brewers. He's the Brewers' opening day starter. Um, Behind him, I don't love the rotation. Um, He's somebody that um, put up some promising numbers last year. 71, Max Fried, Atlanta Braves. Max Fried, I've always been a big fan of. Um, He's somebody that um, I think Braves fans are a little frustrated with. But I think that this guy... Could be in for a good year. 70, Marco Gonzalez, Mariners. 
Marco Gonzalez is a very streaky pitcher, hot or cold, and probably will be the opening day starter for the Seattle Mariners this season. 69, Mike Fultonevich, Braves. I love Mike Fultonevich. I think he could be a dark horse candidate to win the Cy Young Award this year. And he's somebody that has a lot of potential, I think, and was an all-star two years ago. 68, Miles Mikolas, Cardinals. He was an all-star two years ago and regressed last year. I think that he could be in for a little bit of a bounce back this year for St. Louis. 67, John Lester, Cubs. John Lester's another pitcher I think could be in for a bounce back year for Chicago as well as I believe he's in a contract year, which is crazy because I remember when he signed that six-year contract with the Cubs. So, yeah, this is his contract year. So he's under some pressure to pitch well. And the Cubs are just under pressure in general, period. We'll talk about that on the preview show for tomorrow. 66, Mike Fires, Athletics. Mike Fires is somebody that has kind of been inconsistent, but um, really has um, been more consistent than inconsistent of late. Um, he's just a good fit for this Oakland Athletics team. 65, Kenta Maeda, Twins. I don't love Kenta Maeda in the American League. We'll see how that translates. But I think he should be a, uh, a somewhat solid pickup for Minnesota. 64, Rich Hill Twins. I think Rich Hill, I think, has a better chance of working out in uh, with the Twins than Kenta Maeda. I just think that Rich Hill, coming off the injury, it's interesting to see how he'll look. But um, I just believe in him, in him a little bit more, and he has a little bit more, I think, upside despite coming off the injury. 63, Brady Singer, Royals. He has not pitched a game in the big leagues, but he's somebody I think will come in and uh, perhaps uh, become the Royals' ace going forward. Number 62, John Gray, Rockies. Um, John Gray is somebody that um, has been a little frustrating to watch. Um, he just really hasn't put it all together despite showing flashes of big upside. 61, Michael Fulmer, Tigers. Remember him? He's somebody that was the Rookie of the Year in 2016. And uh, he's just been injury prone the last couple of years. And I think he can come back and actually uh, produce for the Tigers. Um, number 60, Anthony D. Sclafani, Reds. Anthony D. Sclafani quietly has been solid for Cincinnati. I just think that he's being... Um, overshadowed in the rotation due to their big three. 59, Jordan Montgomery, Yankees. I think this kid could be in for a breakout season with the Yankees. Coming off of Tommy John surgery, he looked really good in the exhibition game against the Mets the other night. 58, Zach Plesak, Indians. Zach Plesak could be in for a year two bump. Um, he was very um, promising in year one. 57, Ryan Yarbrough, Rays. A very solid reliever slash starter slash opener for the Rays. Um, he's someone I think could um, be in for a good year. 56, Ross Stripling, Dodgers. I think he's going to start a lot of games for the Dodgers with David Price opting out. And he's good in both the starting role and the relieving role. 55, Yanni Torino's Rays. Yanni Torino's quietly had a very good year for the Rays being a... Uh, a starter and a uh, long man reliever. 54, Brad Keller, Royals. Brad Keller is currently slated to start opening day for the Royals. He's um, been promising, but I'm not a fan of him being a, a true, true ace, per se. I think that could be Brady Singer, as I mentioned earlier. 53, Denilson Lamette, Padres. I think Denilson Lamette is coming into the season very overrated, and that's only because he... 28 to 1 to win the NL Cy Young. That's ridiculous. He shouldn't even be the best um, Padre um, to have, or the Padre to have the best Cy Young. Um, so that should be Chris Paddock. We'll talk about him in a couple minutes. But Lamette's very promising, though. But I just don't think he's a top 50 pitcher in Major League Baseball, let alone a guy that um, should be 28 to 1 to win the NL Cy Young Award. 
52, Dakota Hudson, Cardinals. Dakota Hudson has shown a lot of promise these last couple years, and I think that he could be in for a bit of a breakout. 51, Cole Hamels, Braves. This is a really good situation for Cole Hamels coming into a rotation with a lot of kids. And I think that he can help out. And I think he'll thrive in Atlanta. 50, Herman Marquez, Rockies. Herman Marquez is a really good pitcher. Um, obviously, his stats, I think, are a little skewed because of uh, cores. So, I think Herman Marquez is somewhat underrated. 49, Garrett Richards, Padres. I think Garrett Richards could be in for a big comeback season for the Padres. He looked good in the exhibition last night. And he was very good with the Angels once uh, when he was there leading their rotation. 48, Carlos Martinez, Cardinals. I think people forget how good this guy is. I know he was their closer, I believe, last year and the year before, but he's backing the rotation. This guy has a lot of potential, and I think that uh, he could be in for a good year. 47, Corey Kluber, Rangers. I think this is a huge wild card this season. If he's anywhere close to the, uh, the two-time Cy Young winner, then the Rangers got themselves an outstanding pickup. 46, A.J. Puke, Athletics. I think this guy... Could be in for a big year, but unfortunately, um, is it him or Jesus Lazardo that's starting the year on the I.L.? I think it's A.J. Puke. That's unfortunate, but hopefully we get to see him pitch this season. 45, Matthew Boyd, Tigers. Matthew Boyd, I'm not a super fan of. I think he's one of the more overrated pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. But he has good strikeout numbers. He had the, arguably the best year of his career. He's starting on opening day for the Tigers. 44, Eduardo Rodriguez, Red Sox. This guy um, will be back this season. Um, he put up some good numbers last year for Boston, and I think that he could be in for another solid year again. 43, Zach Wheeler, Phillies. Um, I think that the Phillies overpaid him as a free agent, but I think that um, he's somebody that could uh, benefit from Joe Girardi and the Phillies. 42, Mike Miner, Rangers. Mike Miner had a really good year last year. I think he's in for a little bit of regression. 41, Jose Urias, Dodgers. Um, Jose Urias is somebody that I always thought had all-star potential. I think that um, he's going to have a great year this year for L.A. 40, Aaron Savali, Indians. Aaron Savali is someone that pitched really well last year as a rookie. Him and Zach Plesak, I think, um, are two really good young arms. One of them, unfortunately, might have to go to the bullpen. Or I could see one of them being trade bait, potentially. If the Indians want to um, improve their bullpen or um, upgrade one of their uh, positions. 39, uh, Frankie Montas, Athletics. Frankie Montas got suspended last year, so that kind of ruined his season. But he was really good for Oakland last year. 38, Jesus Lazardo, Athletics. A lot of people are high on this kid, so am I. There's a reason why he's their top prospect. And people think that he is a dark horse AL Scion candidate for this year. 37, John Means, Orioles. John Means had a really good year last year for Baltimore. I think he could be in for a little bit of regression because I'm not sold that he is an ace. 36, Madison Bumgarner, Diamondbacks. Madison Bumgarner, I think, is going to have a uh, pretty good first year with Arizona. I like that fit for him, um, staying in the NL West, comfortable in that division. What's surprising about him is that he was 100-1 to 1 to win the NL Cy Young. I think that is a mistake. He should be like 50 or 60-1 to because Madison Bumgarner is certainly capable of getting hot in a short season, maybe carrying the Diamondbacks to a wild card. 35, Kyle Hendricks, Cubs. Kyle Hendricks had a really good year last year. Um, he's somebody that is beloved by the Cub fans, and I think that he could potentially be their ace going forward. Um 34, Lance Lynn, Rangers. Lance Lynn was the best pitcher on the Rangers last year, despite not leading them in ERA. He led them in war. And I think he's someone else that's in for a little bit of regression this year. And um, should be interesting to see how he does. And I could be very wrong with how I uh, rank the top three pitchers on the Rangers rotation. It won't shock me if Corey Kluber ends up having the best season between him, Minor, and Lynn. 33, Hyunjin Ryu, Blue Jays. Hyunjin Ryu got massively overpaid by the Blue Jays. He led the, the NL and ERA last year and the Dodgers, obviously. But um, going to the AL East, I think he could be in for a rude awakening.
as um, the Yankees somewhat proved last year in um, that game or in that series last year when they went to uh, Dodger Stadium. 32, Carlos Carrasco, Indians. Carlos Carrasco is someone I think it could be in for a big bounce back this year, coming off um, him being sick. It was good to see him pitch last year, but um, his stats weren't that special. But I think he uh, could very well be in for a good year this year with Cleveland. 31, Jake Odorizzi, Twins. Jake Odorizzi quietly had a good year last year. Um, a lot of wins, but that was because of the loaded offense. I think that he could possibly regress. 30, Zach Greinke, Astro. Zach Greinke was awesome last year. Good trade pickup for Houston. Um, and it got um, money off the Diamondbacks' hands. Um, helped them go to the World Series. And there's pressure on him to perform this year with Garrett Cole no longer there. 29, you Darvish, Cubs. You Darvish finished last year very strong. A lot of people are high on him this year to win the NL Cy Young, potentially. And I think that he could be in for a good year, too. 28, Charlie Morton, Rays. Charlie Morton had a great year last year, was a Cy Young candidate. I think he could be in for a little bit of regression. He's getting older there in age. 27, Masahiro Tanaka, Yankees. Masahiro Tanaka is someone I think is capable of getting hot in a 60-game season. But the issue here is that he's out with a concussion right now because Giancarlo Stanton hit him in the head with the uh, line drive ball in the beginning of summer camp. But he's supposedly going to be okay. Maybe he could very well start for the Yankees next week. So um, maybe this 27th ranking isn't so bad after all. 26, Dallas Keuchel, White Sox. I think Dallas Keuchel's in for a good year with the White Sox. It's a good fit. Um, helping the young guys in that rotation. We looked good against the Cubs yesterday. 25, Jose Barrios, Twins. Jose Barrios is somebody that is electric with his pitches, strikes out a lot of guys. But occasionally he would have like a clunker or two that makes me would be uh that would make me a little concerned. But I don't think he's on like that totem pole ace top ten level quite yet. Twenty four, Marcus Stroman Mets. I think Marcus Stroman could be in for a big year with the Mets in a contract year in the National League. And obviously with Noah Syndergaard out, there's pressure on him to perform. And especially him in New York, too. There's always expectations in New York, whether it's the Yankees or the Mets. 23, Sonny Gray, Reds. Sonny Gray had a amazing bounce-back season last year for Cincinnati. I think could be in, a, uh, in line for another solid year with the Reds. And he's starting opening day for them. 22, Sean Manaya, Athletics. Sean Manaya, I think, is in for a huge year coming up for the Oakland Athletics. I think he is the ace of that staff. He threw a no-hitter against the Red Sox. He looked very good last year at times coming off the Tommy John, so I think he's in for a good year. 21, Shohei Otani, Angels. Um, Shohei Otani, this is me his first year pitching in a long time, and he's somebody that this ranking is based on potential, and he was very special as a pitcher before he got injured in 2018. 20, Trevor Bauer, Reds. I think Trevor Bauer's in for a bounce back with Cincinnati this year in a contract year. 19, Patrick Corbin, Nationals. Patrick Corbin was solid last year for the Nats in their World Series run. He was coming out of the bullpen sometimes, getting some big outs, and other times he flopped out of the bullpen. 18, James Paxton, Yankees. I think James Paxton's in for a monster season. He's in a contract year, so that's why I have some of these contract guys like Paxton and Bauer and Tanaka and Stroman ranked pretty high because I believe in contract year guys. Like They always tend to perform, and I think all those guys are capable of getting hot in a 60-game season. So Paxton, someone that was hot to finish last year, and um, pitched well in the playoffs for the Yankees, too. Number 17, Luis Castillo, Reds. Luis Castillo um, is somebody that has so much potential. But he's like Barrios from Minnesota in the sense that 
there's just so many clunkers that kind of uh, screws up his stats. But he's very, very talented. Number 16, Tyler Glasnow, Rays. Tyler Glasnow, if it wasn't for an injury last year, would have been in play for the AL Cy Young. I think he's really, really good. And I think could be in for a big year. 15, Lucas Giolito, White Sox. The year opening day starter for the White Sox had his coming out party last year after many people, including myself, wrote him off completely. 14, Aaron Nola, Phillies. Aaron Nola, the ace of the Philly staff, will be their opening day starter. Um, wasn't that great last year, and I think he's in for a good year this year at Philly. 13, Clayton Kershaw, Dodgers. Um, Clayton Kershaw, obviously, um, is somebody that uh, is still considered an ace in today's game. I still consider him an ace. Um, I think that he could potentially get hot in the 60-game uh, season and win the NL Cy Young Award. Number 12, Steven Strasburg, Nationals. Steven Strasburg coming off the World Series MVP and um, the big contract. Expectations are high. He's healthy, and I think he's in for a big year. 11, Justin Verlander, Astros. I put Verlander, Strasburg, and Kershaw in that same tier but more Verlander and Kershaw than Strasburg. I threw Strasburg in there because he got paid. And um, I'm interested to see like how he kind of looks. And plus, Verlander and Kershaw have been dealing with um, kind of injury issues like Strasburg over the last couple of years. But Verlander, I think, could be in for a good year. Um, pressure's on him with no Garrett Cole, obviously, there. But I think that he could be in a little bit of a decline here. But that doesn't uh, take away that he's still a, a, a very good, at worst, pitcher. 10, Blake Snell, Rays. Blake Snell, I think, could be in for a bounce-back season after regressing after his Cy Young Award from a couple of years ago. And I think he is the ace of the Rays staff, not Tyler Glass now and not Charlie Morton. I think it's Blake Snell. 9, Mike Clevenger, Indians. Mike Clevenger's in for a big year for Cleveland. Um... So much good stuff, and I think that his ceiling is very high. Eight, Chris Paddock, Padres. Paddock is someone that was unbelievable last year, and then the Padres randomly sent him down to single A, which was beyond stupid, and that kind of ruined his season. So I think he's in for a big year this year. Seven, Mike Soroka, Braves. Mike Soroka, the ace of the Braves staff, I think has a legit shot at winning the National League Cy Young Award this year. Six, Jack Flaherty, Cardinals. Another guy I think has a legit shot at the NL Cy Young. Was red hot to finish last year. The ace of the Cardinals staff for sure now. Five, Shane Bieber, Indians. I think Shane Bieber's in for a monster season. A ton of potential and upside. Him and uh, Clevenger are going to lead that rotation for the next couple of years. Four, Walker Bueller, Dodgers. Walker Bueller, I think, is another guy in for a big year. I think he has supplanted Clayton Kershaw as the ace of the best team in the National League. Three, Max Scherzer, Nationals, coming off a World Series champion and um, was an, a, yet again a finalist for the NL Cy Young Award, still strikes guys out, and certainly, I think, was the best free agent signing in Nationals history, bar none. Two, Jacob DeGrom, New York Mets. They're a two-time NL Cy Young Award winner. Um, should be ready for his opening day start after having a stiff back in the uh, summer camp. But yeah, it's the bait for one, two, and three, in my mind, for best pitcher in baseball between DeGrom Scherzer and who my number one guy is. And you can argue something for each of those three. Scherzer, your case is... Strikes out a lot of guys, won multiple Cy Youngs, and just won the World Series. Your case for Jacob DeGrom is he's your two-time national Cy Young reigning award winner. And number one on my starting pitcher's ranking list is Garrett Cole, New York Yankees, if there wasn't any doubt. <laughs> so Garrett Cole obviously helps lead the Astros to the World Series. Led the AL and ERA last year, 2.5. Impressive year for Garrett Cole. Was good two years ago as well at the Astros. Uh, stayed healthy the last couple years, which is important for him. 
because he um, was had the injury-prone label when he was with the Pirates, although he's had some good games with the Pirates, too. He's had some memorable moments and good years with the Pirates and finishing in the top five for the NL Cy Young with Pittsburgh as well. But he signs a big contract with the Yankees. He looks motivated and ready to go, looking unbelievably good in the summer camp, and I think he's in for yet another big season for the New York Yankees. And now I'm going to do my... Best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, Yesterday I lost with picking the Philadelphia Union over Orlando City. So we have to find a new pick for today. Um, We'll stick it in Major League Soccer. Let's go with Atlanta. Desperation. Must win. Um, They're a good team. And I think that uh, they're under some pressure and they know it. I think the value's there at plus 190. Desperation spot. Columbus is riding high. Due for regression. Overvalued here to plus 115. So I'm going to go with Atlanta United at plus 190 tonight as my best bet. So that's it. For the show today, I'll be back tomorrow with um, MLS and Premier League results as well as uh, MLB Summer Camp results. And also, we'll be looking ahead to Summer Camp games for Wednesday. And I'll do my 2012 Top 10 NBA players and games. And I'll do my reliever ranking list coming into the season. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.